All right, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for joining our very special event today. And welcome to our RDM uh, webinar that we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive. And I hope you guys are excited as much as we are about this event. We've been doing a lot of preparation. So we've got uh, Maurice, our VP of Business Solutions and uh, Master of Everything. basically. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, our founder and CEO here, David Hervieux. And uh, I'm really excited about this day because we wanted to do something a little bit different. We know, especially with the difficult times we've been living in lately, um, we, a lot of times we have a webcam in front of us and we're trying to give a presentation. But now we wanted to do something fun where we have all of us here together and uh, maintaining our safety measures and doing everything we need to do, but also just have a good time to uh, share with all of you folks, all of our users and, and uh, community and uh, fan, fan club that we call it, uh, just a little bit about what we're doing here in Devolutions, talking about Remote Desktop Manager, the tool that uh, you have um, <clears throat> commented and said how much you enjoy. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the past, the present, and the future of everything Remote Desktop Manager. So right now, many of you uh, have gone to sessions already. Uh, we know even Mark, I have Mark here on the side, and he's answering questions uh, in the chat concerning some technical things and uh Many of you are going to join in on the stage here where we're going to start just in, a, in, in just a minute or so. But um, thank you so much for joining us. We have over 250 people uh, joined in. We had over 700 people sign up, and we're really excited about this day. So, uh, Maurice, thank you for joining us again, and we're excited. Mm -hmm. And Dave, thank you so much. It's always fun to have these two guys behind me because they're, they're a world of, uh, of possibilities, and uh, I love bouncing ideas off of them. So... Uh, today, it's just going to be kind of like a podcast where we're going to be explaining some things and uh, we're going to be demonstrating. Uh, Mark's going to go over there and uh, showcase uh, some features in Remote Desktop Manager. Um, and we're, like I said, we're going to be doing a past, present, and future of Remote Desktop Manager. Then we'll take about a 10 minute break uh, to be able to uh, get, get some water if you need to go to the restroom or whatever. And then after that, we'll do a QA. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. You can ask your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them as well as uh, we have uh, just a, a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, and you can ask any question you want. I've already gotten some interesting questions that were submitted like, um, does Dave like chocolate or not? <laughs> and uh, and uh, what's his favorite kind of vehicle? So we'll answer all those mysteries that you've been wondering all your life about uh, as we get along. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just uh, relax, enjoy this time, ask your questions in the chat. We have lots of people there. Jenny's there, uh, there to answer your questions. If you have anything whatsoever, we are here for you. We're doing this event for you uh, because we really care about our community and we thank you for uh, what you have contributed uh, and, and are using it. So let's get go ahead and get started. So what I wanted to do was um, really start with the beginning. So a lot of people... <clears throat> You know, there's always the famous Silicon Valley stories. The guy started in his basement. The guy started in his garage. Uh, how did this How did this whole thing begin? And uh, that's where I really wanted to pick on Dave's brain a little bit because I, I've read some things about it. And Maurice is actually part of it, too, because uh, he's got some input on that. But uh, Dave, go ahead and tell us a little bit about Remote Desktop Manager before Devolutions. Where did this dream start? How did it all start? You have to know, uh, Jan, that uh, I used to be a software developer, and I'm still cutting a lot, a lot. And um, I used to be also a software consultant. So my goal at the beginning was to create a company and to show that I'm able to do stuff. I started to create products, but unfortunately, like most of our products that we create, it doesn't pan out. So one day I decided to create a small tool called Remote Desktop Manager because uh, I had to access different computer for um, for my uh, QA. You, you, I don't know if you remember that time when you had i5, i6, and i7, and the only way to test everything was to access different machines. So I created a small tool just to simplify my life by accessing my kind of bookmark and this was free. This was the beginning of Remote Desktop Manager. At the last uh, presentation, uh, I showed some uh, screenshot of the first product. It was very, very basic stuff. But the idea was to simplify my life. So I was the first user. 
And at that time, I think that uh, RDC Man was not uh, available. Uh, I think that uh, few tools were available, but it was not uh, it was not opening the RDP connection externally. Uh, in at the beginning, that was my goal to open remote desktop with MSTSC. So one day, a company uh, from the United States uh, called me, and at that time, my boss was Maurice. Yes. Uh, you know, he used to he used to be my boss. So uh, dream on, guys. Maybe one day it will be your turn. The the uh, plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So uh, at that time, a company called me to do a kind of white label of remote desktop manager. This company was called Deston, and a few years later, they were bought by VMware. Their goal was to create uh, a kind of access portal for their uh, desktop as a service. So the first sales of, sale of Remote Desktop Manager was a white label. With that money, I uh, hired my two first employees, uh, Mathieu and André. They are still working with us. And at that time, I was, uh, I was with Maurice. And I started to sell on PayPal my first commercial version of Remote Desktop Manager. What was the difference? Uh, I don't know if you remember. It used to have a SQL database instead of a local file. So that was the turning point of Remote Desktop Manager, saving the file, uh, skipping the file and saving the data in the database to make sure that you can share everything. And one day I got um, um, uh, a donation for, for my free product. And this was the tipping point of the commercial version of the potential of the commercial version of Remote Desktop Manager. And at that time, I told Maurice, if I can sell for 5K per month of remote desktop manager, I will quit my job. And he, he knew at that <laughs> every time. Month, that every, every month. Every month. How, how much have you sold? How much? Uh, Two, yeah. 2K, 3K, and one day. But at that time, I had two employees. So I was working full time with Maurice in, uh, in, the, in the medical industry. And eventually, I quit. And this was the beginning of Remote Desktop Manager. And slowly, but uh, at a fast pace, we grow and we never stop. That's awesome. It, it's amazing how things start. And, uh, you know, sometimes people say it's not necessarily what you know, but it, like who you know, right? And then the, the relationships that, that started early on, like you said, it kind of flipped. But that's interesting. Though. That's yeah, good, we have though. so many colleagues from previous jobs. Uh... Nick, Stefan, uh, Ben, Ben, uh, Andre. Andre. It goes on and on. So, uh, you know, you meet people, you know their work, work ethics, and uh, David just got all of them on board. The funniest thing, at uh, Maurice, first time I met Maurice, I was the guy who was doing the interview. Later, he became my, my boss, and after that, I became his boss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, be nice with people. <laughs> No, but that, that is true though. That, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been, I know Dave, you're a big, you're a prolific reader and you love reading books and he has a whole library that is always sharing books. And you know, they talk about leadership skills and things like that, but it really is important. Uh, we're a community here. And you know, when we come on, uh, on board here at Devolutions, uh, we're sharing information, but we, we help each other out. But you know, sometimes people come and they go and they leave, but the relationships are always there. And I think it's great when we, you know, people talk about networking, you know, we, I was telling Maurice, last year at this time we were in san francisco at rsa and you know you sometimes you go to these big events and uh, you have a big booth and everything and uh, it's quite a bit of money to to go to these things but a lot of the things we do is just networking communicating making relationships and that's how we meet a lot of you folks and that's why we we wanted to put something on like this for you because i think it's important that you can really see, share you know david's sharing his heart like you said he's still coding today some of some folks asked or in the chat um, is he still coding? Yeah, he's still coding today. Uh, and uh, I make sure the code's all good. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's been so long since I've coded. Last thing I did was COBOL <laughs> years ago. But uh, uh, and Maurice is still heavily involved in it. Yeah, yeah I'm more into scripting uh, nowadays, but still. Yeah. So Maurice, give a little bit. I know a lot of people ask VP of Business Solutions. So, um, what exactly are what are some of the roles that you're when it comes to remote desktop manager and, and different solutions? What are some of the things that well, you're involved in here? It's a title that. We came up with because it's like three hats. Uh, it was in, I was in charge of customer success. I was in charge of uh, uh, 
really being the front line, uh, supporting the uh, marketing and sales team for, for meeting customers, going at trade shows and everything. And then also uh, because the hat was on the floor, I picked it up and it was IT. So I, I oversaw uh, a lot of different teams, uh, but uh, while meeting a lot of different people uh, at trade shows, uh, that's the title we came up with. So uh, customer success, uh, IT, and uh, be, being really uh, meeting customers all the time. And now we've added the product owner of the PAM aspect uh, because uh, I worked so uh, so much avec, uh, with uh, yeah. a CyberArk, a Beyond Trust, Secret Server. Uh, then we started, we realized that our Devolution server, which used to be called Devolution's password server, which yes. used to be called Remote Desktop Manager server, yes. <laughs> uh, that it almost fit the bill for being a PAM. So we just went with it and created our own. So. Um, so that's that. So it's a make believe title. <laughs> that's great. But but you know, but that's part of the fun too, I think, is where a lot of people here are very um fluid or like versatile. So we we we're flexible, we change things, but uh I think it's part of being a good team, you know, as having what I what I like is the startup mentality. Sure. So if I need to take out the garbage, I will. It's uh, sometimes you need to put the team forward, think of their productivity and just be uh, the grease and the bearings. Yeah, yeah. So that's that mentality. Uh, Dave still still uh, does the builds, so uh, everyone is on board. Just for RDM window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, it's fun because I know a lot of our, our viewers too. We have a a whole variety of folks watching right now. We have people that have been using RDM for years. We have some sys administrators, IT admins. We have single users, you know, the IT guy who is the IT department. He does everything, right? And we have some of you that work for large enterprises as well. And it, but I think the mentality that you've reciprocated with us is you've enjoyed um, at least what we, uh, the, the philosophy behind of what we do. And I think that's what we're trying to do with Remote Desktop Manager. We know we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Um, none of our solutions are perfect in, in itself. We have issues, we have struggles that we are facing as well, but I think it's the mentality of we're always moving forward. And sometimes when we have a bazillion features, it's because you folks have been asking, hey, I need to do this specific widget or thing. So we say, sure, it's for you. So uh, there's a lot of sometimes complexity behind it, but the whole point is to really um, service your needs. So that's why we, we're doing this. If you have any questions specifically about uh, in the, during the Q&A as well, let us know because we'd love to answer those questions about why we did this or how we're doing this or wh how we're tackling it. So that's a little bit about the past. Now, just curious, was it in your garage or was it in the basement? In the basement. Okay, okay. it was in the basement. You, you know, uh, one of my uh, biggest regrets, I sold the couch. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh that couch. Oh, that couch. You should have kept, oh, yeah. kept that couch. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, there's a lot of good memories though, too. I yeah. mean, and, and we, we, I wasn't there when you started, but where, where were some of the locations that we worked at before? Like originally it was the couch, yes. but then it moved on My to, basement. yeah. And, uh, the first office was near the current office. Uh, it was a small place at that time. My, my, uh, goal was to make sure to have the smallest rent possible in case of failure. And after that, we, we grow and we moved to, uh, 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 it's a clubhouse, a golf clubhouse. Uh, how do you say that one? Yeah. The golf was no longer there. But oh, yeah. They, they had the building. So it, it was a green floor, a red wall. It was ugly, uh, the 90s. Uh, so we we changed everything. It, it was cool because, you know, we, we are from Laval Tree, and there is no uh, industrial uh, building like you could find in Montreal. But it was our kind of old school building. So it was the, really the beginning, Maurice, what with us at the beginning. So we move after that in uh, uh, a building that used to uh, be a bank and we, we grow uh, we, twice. twice. So we are still there in Laval Tree, a small town. It's funny because sometimes we have people uh, flying from California and they, uh, they take a Uber from Montreal and they see the, the farm. <laughs> but, but it's not that bad, don't worry. And now with the internet, uh, you know, and with the pandemic, everybody can be connected from everywhere in the world. So, so it's no longer important where you want to be happy, want to have a nice place to work. 
and that's what we have. And, and one thing that's actually been amazing, and it's a testament, and thank you to you, the users, because uh, let's be honest, you are the folks that keep us employed because you're you're purchasing our software. But we have been able to, because of the technology and everything, work from home 98% of the time since, when, when did we start working from home more of a, um, when the pandemic, when did we start? March, March? June? Yeah, uh, about March. 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 Yeah. yeah. So about March, we've been working. So uh, when you when you call somebody for support, um, all of our support teams, all of our sales teams, marketing teams, uh, uh, developers, they've all been uh, at home, uh, working from home, trying to maintain it. And at first it's a challenge because we still want to maintain that high level of yeah. you know, answering uh, calls within a certain time frame and emailing. And But uh, we didn't want folks to suffer, but man, it, it worked out really well. I'm thankful for it. Yes, but we have a big problem. Uh, the pinball high score haven't been uh, updated been done yeah. since uh, <laughs> that time. So <laughs> the machines are crying to get played. That's true. But it, it's hard, though, because there is a, a synergy when you're working together yeah. with people. Yeah. We've been doing Microsoft Teams. We've been doing webinars. We've been using Zoom, all, all sorts of things to, to stay in contact during these times. But you folks know uh, we've all been hit different areas. Um, it is a challenge, but we're we're working through it. And as a team, I think we can get we're we're getting through it. You know, yeah, well, we're working more. Yeah, exactly. You, you're almost all the minutes of your day are spent working. Yeah. When I come to the office, you you yeah, you waste a little time. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> socializing. But but that's part of the community yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good thing to socialize. It's a good thing. So that's why we have all those things. Now, uh, a little side note. It's not necessarily the Q and A, but um, somebody said. Um, where does the name Devolutions oh, come yeah. from? And that's a good one. It's a good to one. Because actually, I'll be honest, I don't know the answer to this. Okay, I'm come sorry. On, yeah, <laughs> come on. Okay, actually, I have, I have an idea. I have a question in our quiz. <laughs> I, I've actually, I've heard the story before, but yeah, okay. uh, go ahead. Some people uh, think that it's Dave Olution. <laughs> My name is David, but it's not the case. <laughs> that's good. So it's, it's, um, it's portmanteau, we call that, with... Yeah. Uh, the um, evolution and the development and evolution. But the real reason is that uh, it's funny, like everything is evolving and, and not, not it's repeating itself. My, my best example is, you know, in, uh, 50 uh, years ago, we had mainframe. And after that, it, uh, the, the revolution with the desktop happened and we came back with the mainframe, but we call that internet. But it's, it's the same, you have a console on the mainframe, this is the internet. And now we're back with the desktop, but we call it smartphone. So every every day, every, everything is evolving in, in a kind of repeating itself. That's the devolution. So eventually, you know now, the, it, I think the color the, are coming back to, um, uh, you know, the, the, the bright color of your uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming back. Uh, in in the the uh, the uh, the uh, modeling industry, yeah. So uh, fashion, yeah, yeah, fashion, yeah. Thinky, thinky, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's funny because that that's something that I I notice, and I think uh, you could do something. And you know what the real definition of devolution? Mm. It's uh, decentralized of uh, of a government or power. Okay. So it's it's it was not the goal, but that's what we do with the password. Sure. We, we try to to decentralize everything by giving the power to everybody. But at the same time, we do the opposite. We centralize the access, but everybody is able to get access to everything. There's That's a, where the name came from. There's a tidbit. Why is there an S at the end? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh yeah, instead of devolution. That, that's yeah. a good one, Maurice. That's yeah. a good one. I'm pretty sure that, that not a lot of people and employee knows that, you know? At that time, it was about uh, near the uh, uh, financial crisis. So, some website were available, and uh, I tried to buy Devolution without a S, yeah. but unfortunately, it was not available. So I had to buy it with an S, <laughs> and uh, I've been able to buy Devolutions with an S, but it was .NET, and I think it's uh, six or seven years ago. It took a while. Uh, yeah, we mm -hmm. were we were able to buy the .com, and it was really nice because it was sold by a, a company, a German company. And uh, the coolest thing I knew that because uh, a German company is is really um, straight. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, compliance is important. So I knew at that time that I could do the transaction, and I will not get 
through because it was a lot of money to buy a dot com and yeah. and I wanted to be sure that not losing my money with a the escrow thing, you know, yeah. and uh, because it was uh, in Europe, yeah, it said I mean, it was a peer to peer transfer. Yes, yes. exactly. So yeah. it's frightening to do that <laughs> for a domain name uh, with a dot com. You know, it's it's more expensive than a few hundred dollars. But that's why if you uh, if you go on our website, you will see what's make the difference between devotions.net and devotions.com. It's easy when you know everything that is an application, a login or a portal, it's .com, and everything is indexed by Google, uh, like the forum, like our website, like our knowledge base, our online help is .net. So mm -hmm. that's the main differentiator. That's really interesting. I did not know the S. <laughs> All I know is don't, because we're in the French language, you put like an accent sometimes on like the E, you know, so devolutions instead of devolutions, and I know, all I know is don't put the accent when you're when you're no. doing because sometimes the autocorrect wants to do it. So, but uh, so devolutions with an S. And, and remote desktop manager.com. I bought it after the the crisis. You know the paper financial crisis yeah. in 2008. A lot of websites were available, so I've been able to buy remote desktop manager.com, and this gave us the biggest SEO possible without paying. A dollar. Wow. So all the keywords, all the keywords yeah. easily. And I've never been able to, to, uh, it's, that's a funny story. A funny story. I'm not sure that a lot of people, I've never been able to copyright remote desktop manager because at that time I flooded the downloads website with, uh, with remote desktop manager. And when the, uh, the editor tried to verify if it was used everywhere, it was used somewhere, it was used everywhere, but it was, me all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> I was unable to prove that. So I just gave up and said, if I'm unable to copyright it, nobody will be. So that's the problem. Wow. That's cool. I had another question in the chat, uh, a little bit on less on the serious note, but they were commenting on my little Funko dolls there. And uh, it's got, I got little Captain Picard and uh, anyway, uh, and Spock, but uh, it's a Star Trek thing. But somebody asked, okay, here it comes. <laughs> Is David... Or devolution. Star Wars. There you go. <laughs> Star Trek or Star Wars. And I know, I know this. Okay, okay. We just lost five hundred viewers. No, no. <laughs> but uh, the famous battle. You know, the Star Trek versus Star Wars. But I, I wish I could show you. Maybe I'll show you uh, with a camera. I'll make a little video one day. But uh, Dave loves. Well, he loves a lot of things, and and he shares that love, which is a beautiful thing. But Legos are a lot of fun. Pinball machines and uh, and and Star Wars. So if you walk around, you'll see we have like. The large Imperial Star Destroyer, um, you know, um, Lego. from Lego that we and it was fun because during our breaks, teams would sit down. Uh, this was pre-COVID, but we'd sit down and yeah. you grab an espresso and or a slushy, and then we we build it together. So it was a team building activity. But uh, and you'll see little Star Wars uh, Legos everywhere, uh, signs. I mean, we even have a, a Star Wars, a couple lightsabers, places. We've got some helmets. We've got all sorts of different things. So. Um, so Dave is definitely a Star Wars guy. So all your Trekkies, I, I'm kind of in between. So I have to be honest, I grew up on the next generation. So I'm a great, uh, I'm a big Captain Picard guy. Uh, but uh, I do love Star Wars as well. So we're kind of in the mix. So what, what about you, Mo? I'm straight on the line. Okay, I, I really? 50-50. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So we're together. But <laughs> so, uh, the force is strong with us. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so for all of those out there who are questioning about that, that's that's where that comes from. Um, all right, so we, we talked a little bit about the past. Now, uh, when we started, obviously, it was Remote Desktop Manager was the big one. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how we decided or the thinking behind the branching off into the kind of the various solutions? I know some were a little bit more, we'll try this out and some things. Like, how did the need come for um, eventually Password Hub and, uh, and uh, Server and as well as Wake? And that thing. So, so what was kind of the direction that you wanted to take with that? Do you mean that? Uh, um, I'm not sure what you want to where the, the angle that you want to talk is that uh, because it's all coming from the users. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What you mean? Yeah, yeah. So the idea of remote desktop manager is to to be the central point of everything. Uh, we tried a few years ago to to compete directly with different products, but we always come back to the beginning which is remote desktop manager. So we, we always target the same kind of audience, which is you folks, the IT people. And 
the goal of remote desktop manager at the beginning, I was just mentioning a few, few minutes ago that it was productivity. But now we live in a world where productivity is not enough and you need security. That problem is, it's like the fight between salesmen and the marketing teams, the fight, uh, this is your fault, this is your fault. I'm pretty sure you're living the same thing with the security. So you, you, you get restriction, but you have to do your, your work. And we try to do in Remote Desktop Manager, integrate as many technology, which, which bring complexity, like you mentioned, uh, Jan, complexity, because playing safe for us will be easy, just doing like RDC Man, which, by the way, I'm really glad that they, 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 they come back because they will improve the RDP integration. But that's not what we do. We integrate different things. And it's funny because we are competing, you know, that's my favorite word, the uh, competition. Yeah. Remember I talked yeah. about that? Because it, the new world is like that. Apple is competing against uh, Google. Microsoft is competing against uh, Google. And Samsung is working with Microsoft, working, uh, competing against, it's, 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 um, it's everything in the middle is for the user, so you decide. So that's why we want to do, we want to learn from you, learn from the market. Unfortunately, we will do some mistakes. Uh, for sure, we are human, we are very transparent. That's why we're integrating different PAM solutions, but we do our own. So if you think that our solution is not good enough for you, maybe we're not there yet. So we try to evolve, get better, learn, do it our way. Because we we don't target Fortune 500 for the PAM now. Maybe in five years, we know. Who knows? But that's that's the idea of integrating different products. So for Hub, it's okay. I wanna I wanna use a password manager that is online on the cloud, and I wanna share those this password manager with my accounting department because it's simplified. But the problem, if you don't have the integration in Remote Desktop Manager, which was the case. Last year, it's nothing for you. So we we're back to the uh, to square one and do everything in, integrated in Remote Desktop Manager. That's the same thing with with Wake. Wake uh, the Wake Bastion will be in the next. Um, yeah, right? that's, that's good. Uh, we'll have its own data source in Remote Desktop Manager. This will be really interesting because that's the tool that you start in the morning and that's the tool that you don't want to close at the end because you know that you will need to start it the next day so everything needs to be centralized that's the same thing if you use uh, tools like uh, uh Kaseya or you want you want everything centralized we don't have everything yet but we try as we get requests and the hardest part for us you know we, it's when we have to do integration without the approval of the third party mm. so if you want to do something for us get them involved in the integration. I, I have a good example. We sure. did, um, I think it's three years ago, we did a, uh, an integration of Keeper, yeah. you know, the Keeper password manager. Uh, we did the integration and the, uh, I don't know how, the Keeper team learned about the remote desktop manager integration. They, they, were, not, they were not mad at us. They were really in, interested. Sure. So they provided us a real SDK. So yeah. it's much easier to work with them then do it on ourselves, and there is less um, risk for you sure. of, uh, of a bad integration because if we do the integration ourselves, we never know when the API will be, will be uh, changed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember talking to the CEO of Keeper when we had a conversation about that, and it was a lot of fun because he was like, this is great for us because yes. people are using your software. So the thing is, we don't necessarily want you to change what you're using because as an IT professional, you've got hundreds of, I mean, <laughs> Maurice, like yeah. how many tools do you use every day? It's, it's yeah. insane, right? Yeah. Um, and then, but just integrating like the centralized, the Swiss army knife yeah. aspect. It's all about productivity, you know? Exactly. Uh, especially with our PAM partners, uh, they put so much focus on uh, security and compliance. It comes at a cost of productivity. So yeah. everything we do is to try to give you back what you've lost. Sure. Absolutely. Now you mentioned something really good about the Pam. Um, so Pam is like, I remember, cause I was kind of like, yeah. he, he's my mentor, my Pam mentor. I kind of sat on a wing, like studying the market. Cause at first it's overwhelming and it, it, the definitions keep changing. So can you go over a little bit about 
a little bit about the like the high level 30,000 foot view of Pam and what how we're doing it and why we're doing it for SMB specifically? Yes, so when we started we looked at uh, we were working with Gartner, with uh, Coppinger Coal, uh, with some other small analyst firms and obviously uh, we realized that they're pushing for the Fortune 500, Fortune 2000 even. Uh, and uh, they have a, a different definitions. They have different modules. Some of them put more emphasis on, on password rotation. Some of them put more emphasis on privilege elevation. Uh, so we feel, uh, and we talking with our community, uh, we feel that these analyst firms are pushing the definition of what a PAM is much too uh, far ahead. Yeah. Uh, we don't see that need in our community. Uh, so that's why we we say that our PAM is for SMBs. Yeah. You need a good password vault. You need password account discovery, password rotation. Uh, with our WIC gateway, we'll have a, a, a privilege session management uh, really tightly uh, coupled and with the recording and so on. So uh, again, password vaulting, uh, uh, account discovery, password rotation. It's really what we feel what our community needs. So we've decided to step back and stop following uh, what the big analyst firms are, are pushing for uh, because it's not for really for the rest of us. Yeah. We, 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 we use the name PAM for the rest of us uh, for a little while there. It's really, it, it shows that uh, the definition of a PAM was really widely different for everybody. And it didn't make sense. But Maurice, the great thing is that if for the rest of us, it's us. But for for the <clears> real <throat> PAM, as uh, Gartner will define it, we still have remote desktop manager. I think you should. Yes, you should, it, if, because if your definition is not good for for our user, because you are you are in a large corporation, I think it's interesting if you if you could talk about remote desktop manager. Yeah, because we give back that productivity. Uh, and again, uh, we work with everyone and anyone. Uh, that's been uh, really a reason of our success for the longest time. Uh, we've had our struggles because some, when we created our own PAM, we, we had some months in which, during which we were not partners anymore. <laughs> but we... No <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we worked through that. And, and uh, Max uh, was uh, doing a lot of... Uh, discussions with everyone uh, but you know uh, I feel that we're in the sweet spot because uh, it's it's so expensive and at the at the cost of productivity it, it we have a colleague here uh, uh, next town over uh, some the the security team purchased a PAM without telling them and they told them you must use it so well if I must I'll put RDM in front of it because he knows of our capabilities. So that's really the prime example for me, uh, listening to our community. We have a, a ton of requests and I have a, a ton of ideas. Sometimes uh, it seems slow to you uh, because uh, it, we, have, we have a small team uh, nonetheless, and we, they work on a lot of stuff, stuff a lot of user requests. Uh, so just the PAM integration cannot take all engineering time, but uh, we pepper stuff uh, around and it's uh, it's been working great. But we do have tons and tons of ideas. To... Sure, that's really good. Um, just so you know, also, because we're using the Hopin platform, I really don't have control over buffering. Um, and I've heard some people in the chat saying there's like a, a, a delay. All you have to do is just refresh your browser window. I know it sounds really funny, like, you know, don't control out delete, but, you know, <laughs> but just like refresh, just like we do in remote desktop manager sometimes, uh, just refresh the window and it'll, it'll sync back up because I don't have any control over that. And I don't want you guys to have that, like a Chinese action movie delay, you know, with the voice. So, um, anyway, uh, so if you want to refresh your browser, I know a couple people have mentioned on that, that might help with that. Um, so one thing that's interesting though, is we, we talk about integration with remote desktop manager, and we're going to be talking about some very specific features and we, we still have a good hour to, to, to go. But, uh, uh, the idea though, is one thing we've done is like, we've talked about a little bit about the cyber arc and psychotic. I, I know a lot of times we were talking about Pam. So how do we integrate, especially with them? You know, some of the things that we're doing with that. Well, it's again, 
as, as long as they offer an API to do it, we'll go after that feature because we know our experience now shows that uh, when you use a PAM, most likely you will have a checkout approval workflow uh, for critical accounts. So we intend to do that. Uh, the biggest challenge, honestly, has been 2FA because uh, they're moving to uh, WebAuthn uh, and OAuth and so on. So uh, like Office 365 works. So now we have to uh, open up a window and allow the login process to go on. Uh, so we're a bit behind in supporting these workflows. And, and that's for CyberArk, Beyond Trust, and Antichotic Secret Server. Uh, that's our, the biggest irritant. Uh, but we use their REST APIs. We communicate with them regularly. And again, it's most likely a user request. Yep. Absolutely. But they uh, used to have a technical limitation, which was Internet Explorer. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> good news. Yeah. In uh, the next version of Remote Desktop Manager, we, we will have, uh, uh, for the logging, for the, the, the logging workflow, we will open your favorite browser externally, and uh, we will uh, allow you to use any tools you want to uh, autofill the information. And Remote Desktop Manager will, uh, will take care of the login process, the login workflow. Yep. So that's something for, I know that we have, we will have it for OneDrive, we will have it for uh, Google Drive, for uh, the integration with the pickers, uh, and also, of course, for, for uh, our integration with uh, Devotion's login, uh, including the, the, I, the backup, the online backup, the uh, password hub. And I think uh, Mark is just next to me, and I think it's one of the most uh, annoying thing uh, in remote desk. Maybe not the most. I'm sure you have some uh, some other issues, but the fact that sometimes you are unable to log in on our portal because of IE, and, and it's hard to understand why do you still use Internet Explorer? Uh, because up to a few months ago, it was the only way to do that. And you know, and for those who use Visual Studio, it's still IE when you see the uh, integrated news. And eventually, we, we, we will support. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, Edge Chromium will be supported soon in the next version, which I think it's a good news. Um, we're uh, there's a question that came up because we we're talking about Devolution Server and Pam a little bit. <clears throat> and I know this is a little ahead because we're going to talk about some of the future roadmap. Mm -hmm. But somebody mentioned on the support ticket. That there uh, in the form they said there's a devolution server light potentially in yep. the work. So can you talk? Can you can talk about that so that we? Yeah. Well, it's everyone on, in our space has a free uh, edition, and we've been wanting to do that for the longest time. The issue was that our installation was too complex, and we had, uh, you know, we try to give the white glove service to everyone. Uh, we offer sessions even to the users of the free edition it's it's crazy of rdm uh, so in the for the longest time we wanted to publish a free edition of the uh, devolution server and it's going to be coming in uh 2021.2 right september october yep. could just could you just talk why we change our name it's interesting because it could be confusing <laughs> from the outside yes well uh the most popular reason for choosing our backend product was for AD integration. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, we discovered by studying PAM that we were really close to being a PAM. So we renamed our server Devolution's password server. That, that was, what was it before? Devolution server. Yeah. No, no. The first name was Remote, remote desktop, desktop Manager server. server because it was an extension of Remote Desktop yes. Manager. And after that, we rename it to Devolution Server. And after yeah. that, it Devolution. became Devolution <laughs> Password. Password Sorry server. about that. You should, you should see the code we have. Yeah. DPS, <laughs> DVLS, RDMS. Uh, we have okay. constants for RDMS yeah. still. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. So when we pushed the PAM, uh, we realized that all of the community that needed just AD integration, uh, it was just creating friction and confusion. And when Somebody came like they were using a PAM, and we told them, "Well, for you need you need our Devolution's password server for AD integration." 
no, I have a PAM. I don't need your password server. Well, you don't need it for password management, but you need it for AD integration. And uh, that's why we're going back because poor guys uh, in the sales are, are having a tough time explaining that all the time. Mark is uh, nodding. Uh, <laughs> so we came back and PAM is more as an add-on because by default it's not even enabled. So uh, PAM is a significant part of, uh, of our future. Uh, but it's not at the core of the product. The core is AD integration. And we feel we we're discussing about uh, the, the price being low. Uh, if you just need it in integration, the price would be low. And uh, the extension of that is to have our, our devolution server free. It's going to be, shall I say, like, uh, I won't say the names, but like five users, maybe uh, uh, 20, 50 credentials stored yep. uh, and so on. So we'll see how that goes. We may, uh, we may start with small numbers and increase, uh, but prior to that, we needed to improve our installation. Yep. Uh, so that's, we're in the thick of it. Now we've deprecated the legacy console. Now we have a, a new pair to so the, the UI and the CLI. And I've installed yesterday with the CLI. So it works really nice. You can create a response file and reuse it and script also your updates so you don't have to look at uh, at 95 screens while you do your, your, your job. You just launch your screen and it, it downloads from the web and everything. So uh, we needed to improve the installation. We've done that. Uh, uh, Marc-André is even working for uh, making it easy on Docker because Wake, uh, we have customers that use Wake Bastion and soon Wake Gateway, and that topology is popular uh, to run on, on Docker. So uh, we will have really a nicer experience, a much easier experience, and we'll go even as far as uh, creating images on Azure. So uh, you will spin up your own VM and it will have uh, the password server uh, uh, operating in a free edition uh, from the get-go. That's really cool. But it's important to mention that fit, it's the price which is the problem Call us, call yeah. us. Because if you have really a light usage, there's always something we can do. Yeah, the example is the guy that there were three, yeah. three users. He, he, he wants AD integration, but for his RDM, it costs like $600. And the password server was 2000. Does it doesn't make sense. And we'll adapt. You know, we're selling copied bytes over the internet. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sure. We like, can work on a price. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if Gab is happy. <laughs> <laughs> Our sales. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one more thing. Yeah, uh, about just, oh, the, yeah. uh, the AD integration. Uh, we're working on uh, supporting organization uh, on the internet, on, uh, in Devolution's uh, account, uh, which could be eventually bridge to remote desktop manager. This could be interesting because instead of using or deploying a server, uh, maybe in a year, you will be able to create your organization, uh, configure it with uh, your uh, Azure AD, and we will bridge it, and remote desktop manager will, will talk with uh, the account, uh, devolution account, uh, uh, to, to authentify uh, and uh, give you the access permission. This, this, will, this could be a very simple scenario that we, we want to do. First, we want to do it for um, Password Hub. So you will be able to have access to your Azure AD or uh, Google uh, AAD. It's not Google AD, but it's uh, it G Suite. They changed the name, I think. So uh, I think it's the, the old name. I think mm. they have a new name. Anyway, mm. so it, it has to be easy because, you, you know, we are very transparent and we need to be able to handle the flow. Um, I hope, it's a small parenthesis, I hope that Bitwarden will be able to handle all the flow from LastPass, you know, yeah. because free is not necessarily free for an enterprise. I know, I know it might sound weird that I'm talking about that, but that's the reality. For us, having a lot of people using RDM free, it's not a problem. We are able to handle the support. We are able to help you. We are able to give you a good service, even though that it's free. And it's important on the business side because when you invest in a company, the last thing that you want to do 
is coming back. We, we just had a, a bad news about uh, its uh, GFrog so, or our Linux package. So it's no longer available. It was free, but sometimes free is not free because they decide to cut that. So that's something. I don't say that it's not, it will not happen. It will not happen for remote desktop under freedom. It's for sure, you know, we give you more and remote desktop manager than we were giving five years ago in the enterprise edition. <laughs> so we tried, the idea is to have the maximum of features in the free edition as long as you don't work as a team. So if you are a team, get the benefits of the enterprise edition, but it's not a trick. It's really free. And by the way, do you know why it's called remote desktop manager free? <laughs> no. It's used to call remote desktop manager standard. And at that time I was responding to the email and I was totally, uh, how do you say that? Uh, frustrated or no? Frustrated yeah, yeah. about, uh, about uh, answering, is it free? Yes, it's free. So rename it, Dave. <laughs> it's remote desktop manager free. It's not the standard edition. So uh, that's why. And RDM free is really not a strategy for upselling at all. No. We, we have a limited number of messages where we say, that it's you need the enterprise edition, but that's not for upselling at all. It's just because the architecture of that screen was so that we needed to keep it yeah. as close as the enterprise as possible. But it's not a strategy. It's not a gimmick. No, no not at all. Uh, what are we up to? Four hundred thousand users. Uh, I think it's more than that. I'm not sure. It's it increases every month. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, the well, I've got a lot of great questions coming in, mm -hmm. so I think we're in the present right now. I think so. We should, I don't know where I do. I have kind of like a bullet points of what I want to do, but it's okay. It's supposed it's to be a great window. It's, it, 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 I threw it out for who needs the script, right? Uh, no, no, no. But uh, we will have a, a, a Q and A session. So especially if you want a specific feature, because yeah. Mark is sitting there uh, doing really good. He's answering questions stuff. But if you want to say like, hey, we want to see this, uh, we'll and during the Q and A, we'll do a lot more of that. Okay, but. Um, Couple questions, though. At first, though, is um, somebody somebody asked, "Would there ever be an RDM Enterprise Light?" As uh, well, <laughs> I'm just back curious. to our RDM professional. Yeah, yeah, RDM. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just curious. I'm not really question. sure that. Be, I don't know. This is Sam asked this, but I'm not really sure what the meaning. Uh, if you're going to specify exactly what you're look, what features you're looking for, but you know, our 95 percent of our users are using RDM and SSH. Okay, it's like you know, it, most users of Word, Microsoft Word, we use like 15% of the product. Sure. I'm sure that's where he's hinting at. Yeah. Uh, so to have team capabilities, but in a much lighter package. Okay. Uh, because 160 technologies, uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know the problem? We used to have something like that. But where do you trace the line? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if the one missing feature is then in the, in the Enterprise Edition, your impression is to get screwed by the versions. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Because oh, they, they didn't put the 2FA in the uh, Professional Edition, so uh, I want the 2FA. Uh, why are you charging me for that? So you see that Dave is on the forums all the time. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. And uh, email. Oh, by the way, if you uh, if you send an error report, I'm the one that get it. So <laughs> I will. I might not be the one that would fix it, but I'm the one that get it. Sure. He knows. He knows what's going on. He knows <laughs> the, the the good things and the things that are where the areas that we're. But need it's, help a with, but... it's a good question. It's a good question. But again, Gab, yeah, sorry, uh, <laughs> negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> because because we we will look at your your specific scenario if you're a big corporation and you have tight budget, we might not be that cool. But if you're working two, two or three people and, and, you know, I remember uh, uh, in, during some crisis in 2012, it was art in Montreal for the, uh, the sweatshirt industry. And uh, I gave some you know, desktop manager enterprise and the guys, he went eventually, uh, he had the budget, he bought it, and eventually he went uh, at uh, working at another place and he bought remote desktop manager. We, we want a real long-term relationship with, with everybody. You know, one good question you could ask, say, why is it a subscription now? 
I have a great question that just came and says, why is it a subscription now? No, but that, that's, that's a good no, question. It's, no, it's that's a good, good question. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a good question because now it's really, really important to maybe not the day that we release a new version update, but it's important to keep the application. Yeah. We will soon, I mean, a little bit in the future. That's fine. We will soon release security bulletin, adversary bulletin yeah. about the, uh, the, the vulnerability in remote desktop manager and in devotion server because now the industry is ready for that and we have to keep our product updated we we have a very uh large team of uh of cyber uh, security internally in remote and uh, devolutions working hard getting the product better better sometimes it's frustrating for the users because we're we're tightening the security you know in a sql server it used to be possible to to use, uh, I think it was a master key was my password by default. And now it, it has to be a mix of of uh, letters. Master key came from Delphi. Uh, <laughs> Interbase. 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 And, uh, so, for those who are uh, older. Showing degree the, there. With Borland, uh, uh, DDA was, uh, OK. So I used to be a Delphi uh, developers <laughs> and Maurice as well, and uh. many people from the so the idea, if I go, go back, why a subscription is because we want to be sure that you are, you have an updated version. Would you use a, a whole antivirus? I don't think so. So it's the same thing. Now we are at that point. It's really critical. You know, ransomware is everywhere. And at the beginning, it will be just for you. So we're, we are upgrading our gains to give you a better product with a seamless uh, integration and we want to make sure it's transparent in your operation, but we are getting really better. Uh, that's the time now. We, yeah. it's, it's serious business now. But the challenge is that we have hundreds and thousands of, of users that may rely on being more flexible than secure. Yeah. Mom and pop shops, they're all seven employees. They're all full admins. They're using RDM for its launching capabilities more than their password management. And by default, you know, security by design mm -hmm. was uh, all the rage, but we can't turn on security for all of you existing users. Uh, so we must have the capabilities, but keep those that don't worry about compliance or security that much uh, to keep on using using their uh, previous patterns. That's the challenge. Yeah, and be ready when they get a ransomware and they try to, they are ready to upgrade to the next step. <laughs> yes. as might happen you know at our last webinar we had uh, the, 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 the conference uh, the, was um evolution um, central online yeah oh, but yeah. what was the, uh, the the main uh the main uh, oh the security oh nick, nick espinoza, nick espinoza. Yeah, yeah his talk was it's not uh uh i think it's when it's, it's not, when, it's, not if, if, it's yeah, when it's so when. it's it's important and you know uh we all upgrade our games in terms of security I remember, I think it was six years ago, I had no pass, maybe seven years ago, uh, no passcode on my cell phone. It was obvious that I didn't need that at that time, but I will never do that now. Never, yeah, never. Sure. security key. Yeah. 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 So, so that's the idea. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna uh, go, there's, a, there's some great questions coming in. So <clears throat> even before the Q&A, let's go for it. Okay, because we're talking about present things. So yeah. Uh, somebody, Andrea, said earlier. She said uh, we have CyberArk, and uh, and I have all of my users using RDM, and they love it. But I say funny story because when we were in San Francisco, uh, hopefully nobody from CyberArk is listening. <laughs> but no, we I, I went to the CyberArk booth. Uh, they had this huge, massive booth, and they have a really good product. But it's a uh, it's funny because we went over that we had our little booth and we went over to the big, you know, the place with like the, the, the massage chairs and the and everything. But uh, I went over there, and it's funny because on all of their little screens. They had remote desktop manager running in the bottom because they run. It, it's it, the integration is beautiful with it. But anyway, so thanks, Andrea. But by the way, I just want to let you know we we love. I mean, you don't have to shower us with compliments, but we love. I mean, we get emails. He gets emails and letters and things all the time saying thank you for remote desktop manager. Uh, it's helped us keep our organization going, especially the, and it's really really helpful. So I we just want to thank you and reciprocate that and say thank you. It's because of you that we that these guys are doing all this stuff, you know? I'm just the nice guy, you know? But, yeah, uh, but by the way, we share that with uh, all the team. Yeah, yeah, we share those letters yeah. and- uh, It's important. It's very important. And we really thank you because it, it keeps us stuck 
a close knit to you folks. And especially one of these questions as well. Um, so here, Herb had a good question. He said, on features for RDM, are there any plans for an API for creating entries? In a DevOps environment, we use Terraform for provisioning. It would be a nice to have features where we could add the new entries programmatically. Okay. It exists. Uh, it's, yes, okay. if you use the PowerShell on Windows, it's possible. But that's something that we want to do start maybe this summer, okay? It's, uh, I think I, I talk about that. Okay, we, we did Windows as a platform. After that, we did um, Mac OS, mobile, and last year we did Linux. Our next platform is, it's not Chrome, because it's already possible with the Android version. It's pure PowerShell. So what we want to do, it's on, on our roadmap. I can't promise you anything. It's a headless uh, remote desktop manager especially yep. for, for as a model for PowerShell. This is a huge project, but... It's on .NET Core. On .NET Core. So it's going to be multi-platform. Exactly. That's something that we want to do. So, so I hope we have, we have one of our team leaders. I think that's the one who started uh, mobile. He started Linux. Eventually, I will ask him, he knows, uh, <laughs> yeah. could you start PowerShell Core? And... That could be interesting. But for now, if you have Windows, which is not exactly like you, because you mentioned Terraform, um, you could do something with, uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the, the PowerShell. Or, or synchronizers. 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 You create a CSV file, and our synchronizer family is just amazing. Mm -hmm. But the downside is that it's an interactive session that you need, you need an RDM running. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, the only downside. It's so powerful. I, I had a session with a cyber customer the other day, and I showed him, uh, he said, how do I import all of my stuff? Well, ED Sync, vSphere Sync, mm -hmm. and he had thousands of computers registered in, in seconds. It's yeah. really amazing. Uh, so uh, using Terraform, uh, you could create a CSV file, and then the RDM will be able to, uh, you can even schedule it or use our command line uh, to, to launch that synchronizer, and it will process that CSV file. And our synchronizers have, have great logic built in because they will handle uh, computers disappearing, being moved, and so on. So it's a really powerful feature, but you need an interactive uh, session running. Eventually, I'm pushing for that. <laughs> That's something that we want to integrate in the Evolution Server. Yeah. So it will Soon. be done in a scheduler without an interactive. It's, and, it's all on. And we have 80% of the code is yeah. existing in RDM. So it's it, it, on paper, it's easy. We just need it's to not that easy, beef know. up our scheduler and, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, this is a question that I know <clears throat> is near and dear to Maurice's heart because he's been help he's, he's kind of, like he said, he has a, a made up title, <laughs> but uh, really works at the our customer success department, documentations, uh, knowledge base stuff. Uh, Herb also asked a question, and this is is this is true, and this is a challenging one. So uh, he says, beyond features, do you have any plans to revamp the documentation? Some of the docs list features that are no longer in RDM, make reference via links to other products uh, like SQL Server and so forth, uh, and so forth. And I know sometimes it's a challenge, but so can you talk a little bit about what we're doing in that department a little bit? Well, the focus. Uh right now was to improve the uh, a site-wide search. You know, we uh, subscribe to a new service. We have... Uh, you could do a small demo if you want, Maurice. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Do you want to... Yeah, Mark has access. I, I think, it, yes, it's on the forum. It's live ah. since yesterday. Oh, oh. okay. But Maurice, you should, you should explain that now we're pushing the knowledge base instead of the online help. Yeah. Which at first is, is the first thing to say. When I joined, there were like, 250 topics in our help. And then every screen we created, we created the topic. But it was help more of an encyclopedic nature. It wasn't really useful. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, no. you know, the drop down for VNC says use a, a smart VNC or the other VNC. Uh, why waste a paragraph on that? But we went really overboard. We had up to 1,300 topics in the RDM file. Yeah. Uh, and 
uh, it's really difficult maintaining uh, such documentation. Uh, and we were spending time on something that was not really used. We were looking at the, the stats and the topics were not really uh, used by the community. What was used was those topics that were more recipes, trips, uh, tricks, how tos. So that's why we split the help uh, from the knowledge base, which will be it's, it's ongoing again with the introduction of that new uh, search. Uh, but we focus more on recipes now, mm. less of uh, really topics that say nothing. We want to move away from that. So, uh, and links really, it's, uh, we could build an engine that tests these out. I, I'm, uh, every time we find one, we fix them. So it's, the, it's just a fact that it's a humongous job. You know, the RDM team, there are five, six. And on Windows, then you have Mac, I iOS, Android. Then you have uh, Wake. Then you have uh, Devolution Server. So all of these teams produce and generate new features uh, almost daily. And uh, we're a really small team. Uh, in fact, the support team has a side task of maintaining the documentation because we tried and tried. Uh, uh, we need people that have some technical knowledge uh, to write documentation that is useful. And Maurice, we're not just documenting remote desktop manager, we are documenting topologies yeah. and technologies. So, so sometimes we have to explain in our documentation how to do SSH tunnel, how to do uh, the, uh, uh, the installation of IIS and all the details. So, yeah. so we are a kind of a knowledge base for the IT, which is not our direct uh, role, but mm -hmm. we do that at the same time. It's funny how often you Google something yeah. and our forum is the first hit. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I'm gonna share uh, Mark's screen and then maybe we can, we're gonna see it up there, but so you wanna, uh, Dave, or who wants to go through? Yeah, a it's a, just, uh, I just uh, showed Ma Mark, uh, just type NLA for, for fun. Just, it, will, it won't be long, 30 seconds. You see, I, it's small. Could you zoom, Mark? Could you zoom? We, do you see, we get, in the forum, we get those topics, but we also get something in the knowledge base now. So you can click on the knowledge base. So eventually, we will have blogs and uh, YouTube video. So it's interesting because now we're, oh, in the forum, but this will be expand on our resources page. Uh, you will be able to search for something and get. And you have you seen our facet was? Uh, it was. Uh, yeah. It's it's really if if you're looking for something, uh, an error, a code, or something like that, you will get all the all the results. So it's it's brand new from this week, and we will continue to improve our uh, indexes. So uh, it's nice because uh, you you get and you can filter uh, if it's Mac or Windows oh, on the that, side. Right. Uh, if you're looking j just for fun, uh, type RDP. You will, we will get a lot of uh, information just to show you that we have different filters. So if you want to RDP in Wake Bastion, our, our, you can filter out. And it's interesting. Now you see in the uh, knowledge base, we have uh, 51 uh, topic about that. And uh, you could go. We, we, we will improve that, but I think it's yeah. a huge step. It was one of uh, the the dream of Maurice dreams <laughs> to to get a centralized, centralized search. For now, it's in the forum, but don't worry, it will be. Now you have the tips, but eventually we will move it to somewhere else on our website to make it more accessible. That's really really cool. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to the main camera. But thank uh, you, Mark. Um, and if and if there's anything else, Mark, well, thank you so much for. <laughs> he's the guy in the background doing all that stuff. So <laughs> great. Um, here's another question. He says, <clears throat> when opening a web page in the new version of RDM, will we be able to open the browser as a different user to the one that RDM is running as IE spawn the embedded or external browser with Runas, et cetera, or run as, sorry. Run as. <laughs> I don't think run as would work for, would it? Um, for this one, Ask on the forum, and Stefan is the king of the run as. But mm. uh, was it embedded? Um, external. He says, uh, "Open the browser as a different user uh, in a tab. Does spawn it... the embedded or external browser with run Maybe as." Maybe external, but but 
I think it could be possible because we have a pretty good integration of the run as Stefan did a lot of work for that. But the profiles are, I, I favor profiles and our Chrome yeah. integration, you can specify the profile. Okay. Doesn't it? Okay. Thank you. External mode. I have like, External I have mode like maybe. three profiles in Chrome, three in Firefox. Yeah. It's crazy because we have our own extensions. We work with others. Uh, that's what I use mostly because uh, Office 365 doesn't tolerate having multiple sessions okay. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where, maybe run as would work. I don't know. Mm. But, th but if you can get, I know you will say, ah, I will get the recipe and you will do it. Yes. <laughs> if you could get the recipe, we will do it. So sometimes you are better than us. So we, we get sometimes requests to do an integration of something and we just don't know where to start. From. Yeah. But at one point you ask it on the forum and somebody has done it with a script PowerShell. We, we, okay, we can analyze what they did and we are able to do something interesting. You know, we have the uh, port knocking when you want to open, uh, it's, it's a kind of code, you 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 ping different port and do, like in Zelda, do, 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 it's opening the, the <laughs> port. That's some, I never heard of that. Sorry, at the beginning, I never heard, heard of that. But we got the requests, we checked and okay, we did a first integration in uh, C Sharp. Mm. And after that, we improved the integration with the native code. And now we have the port knocking. So sometimes, unfortunately, you have to, to, to uh, we're, teach we're not, us. We're not sysadmins. No, no. We, uh, with password server, with devolution server, we struggle with that all the time. We, we're developers. We didn't know about LDAP S. Yeah. The customer says, well, uh, please support LDAP S. <laughs> so uh, we learn as you re request features. It's uh, the, the good side of things. You, you will not see that often a company that say that they don't know any everything, but, but that's the reality. Did we I, are we are just uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did I misspeak? <laughs> no, 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 no. But but that's the reality. So sometimes if you ask for, for an add-on and you give us the command line, uh you will have more chances to, to get the add-on. But if you ask us to check for the command line, we'll have to download, install it. So it's, uh, it will it might sit on the back burner because we have so many requests. So I want I don't want to say that we are lazy, but we are kind of lazy <laughs> sometimes. That because, double SSH hop. We, yeah. Is, yeah. The guy could do it. So please show us uh, yeah. a ton of examples. Yeah. And it's not, how do you say that, bad will? No, 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 no. It's yeah, not yeah. bad will. It's just yeah. because we have a ton of requests. And sometimes we have, when we are at the end of a cycle, of release cycle, we try to do small uh, feature requests just because we have to fill the gap. And sometimes small feature requests is just uh, removing something annoying. So that's when we have some time to time. But when it's harder and it's in, in it's, possible to break something on the other platform, we have to, to be careful and schedule it. Absolutely. Um, uh, great questions. Keep, on, keep them coming, guys. I like these. Uh, is there a jump host version on the roadmap? A jump host version? I think it, that's the gateway. That's the way gateway. Okay, the way gateway. So yes. Yeah. And so is there more information or is it available? When, when it's coming. It, when, coming soon. And, it's coming and, soon and, to a RDM near you. It's but, only for yeah. RDP at first. Okay, for RDP. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the uh, SSH will be later on. It's only for RDP, but it's going to be really, uh, uh, we named it Gateway just because that's what people are expecting to find. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of confusion with jump boxes, bastion servers, and so on. Uh, but it's coming. The first release uh, is really soon. But the goal is to have really a full fledged. Uh, Privileged session management, uh, recording, and so on, handled by by that module mm. rather than recording on on your desktops. We we have uh, stuff coming also with Wake Bastion because we we are moving away of TeamViewer. To be honest, we, we try to do something like TeamViewer with Wake. Yeah, and uh, and any desk. So we have those integration. So instead, we are creating uh, a non-premises uh, installation of a team viewer with, with Wake Bastion to have a, 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 no, uh, a zero trust network with no VPN and to be able to execute PowerShell 
RDP and not just our wake protocol. So I think that we will, in a few months, we will yeah, have yeah. a webinar about that. We have some interesting stuff. It's, uh, it's for us, it's uh, a kind of uh, a different challenge, but, but it's more aligned with what we already uh, do in our different product. Uh, our MSP is a, a specific target. You have multiple sites and you want to create something with uh, a, a great security. And that's the idea. And the main differentiator with the previous version is everything in remote desktop as a data source. Yeah. Um, I, I, another, I saw another great question here. And sometimes it's hard because, especially with our sales team, sometimes trying to answer questions when people are asking what the difference is. So why would you choose, okay, uh, I'm going to play like the guy who's asking the question. Why would you choose Devolution Server over Devolution's Password Hub? I mean, I know that for us, we see it's two different target arguments, but but yeah. with the integration with RDM, how would that be the difference? Well, most likely it would be for an on-premise solution. Okay. That's the first really criteria. If you, uh, a lot of organizations in Europe, they need to have an on-prem solution. So that's the, if you need to be on-prem, it, it has to be Devolution Server. Uh, the, the integration, if you still have local ADs, uh, people are moving to Office 365, it's crazy. Uh, but if you have local AD, you will need Devolution Server. Uh, Up uh, will support Office uh, OAuth. Eventually. Eventually. With, with the organization, that's a thing. Yeah. It's, it's a core so feature that's that we're going to do. Mm. Uh, and our, our synchronizers uh, will be a, a major feature uh, for, a, for Devolution Server. Our, our scheduler is really deeply involved with the caching. So if you have a huge domain uh, to integrate with, uh, it's really a devolution server that you must use. Uh, and the PAM. And the PAM. Yes. Yeah. the PAM. We have extensive notifications. Uh, you can, in fact, again, a steep learning curve, but you can have notifications about everything and anything about what happens in your system. Uh, we have that syslog integration, uh, but we're not, Certified by any board, whereas UB is certified SOC two yes. oh, yeah. for now. SOC two, type two. SOC three, why? Which is on the board. SOC two is really the one. SOC three is not better than SOC two. By the way. <laughs> no, it's just different. It's just the public front yeah. of SOC two. Yeah. So, so most likely it would be the on-prem, the big factor than the Active Directory integration. Sure, and I know even internally. We talked about this too, because I was trying to differentiate when I, because I do a lot of videos on this stuff and I have to ask questions yeah. was for like hub, for example, internally here, um, our marketing team, devolution server is overkill. Like exactly. we, we had, I mean, I'm using it because I have my own instance because I have to do all the screenshots and the videos, you know, but, uh, um, for me having a password hub that uh, is managed, we have a shared vault for our marketing team. And then I have my own user vault. And I'm telling you, I can put on my business passwords. It's so simple. I, I have Devolution Web Login. I don't even have to have the app. You can have it on your phone or whatever, um, or installed on on your on your device. But having that, it's so much simpler for, let's say, like a marketing team or an HR department, business user, business, yes. yeah, the, the, the business user. user. But Devolution Server would cater towards the RDM power users. It's like I need also this. You know, well, that's a partially bit. true because yeah. if you have Devolution Server. You can offer the same experience with Devolution's web login. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's true. Yeah, our true. mobile app is too thick. In fact, so on the board again is an application uh, built what that by the same team that did the hub uh, app. Uh, but uh, again, that's an on-premise uh, solution or not? But indeed, business users now uh, they use they move to the hub and it's seamless for them. Yeah. You almost never go into the hub portal. It's no, exactly. Web login all the way. Yeah, it's been very useful too. And also, we've also recently released Hub Personal. Yeah. Um, and I mean that's great because it's funny. This is there was an inside joke going on, and uh, I know you know about it too. But it's in marketing, some of us still had LastPass or One Password or whatever. You know, yeah. I had I had my RDM file on my <laughs> laptop. You know, accessible with RDM online. You know, but but the reality is even us. We were kind of like, well, what are we supposed to use? Because I know in, in marketing or another HR, they're not going to have remote desktop managers. You know, they don't need that. But um, and we we did hub personal, so it's it's my own personal 
uh, account that's separate from my hub business account with my personal Gmail account. But I, I love that now because now I have my own password manager that's very simple to use. I don't know the plans in the future for that. But it's, and it's yeah. free. It's simple. Right? It's, it's interesting. You know why? Why we haven't uh, jumped in when the last pass announcement was uh, announced? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, why we didn't try to to beat Bitwarden because we want to stay focused on our target market, which is IT yeah. and business. So so it, it for us having a lot. It's free, by the way. Hub Personal. It's free. You should give it a try. It's it's everything and more than that. Yeah. You because you you can bridge it with, with remote desktop manager free. And like it's the re hub personal is the future replacement of Devotion Online Drive. What is missing? It's the offline mode, which is coming soon. But eventually, you will have everything in hub personal with a user interface, with a website, with the application. But why we are not investing in publicity and marketing to get my dad? Because I don't want my, to have my dad. Because if I have that, I will get requests and get out of focus of the IT needs. Sure. So for now, we have to keep the secret. <laughs> but it's really interesting. And why we want to do a free version? Because we want to give you a, a kind of trial uh, a, a, of the feeling of what you could have in, in a web interface for Devotion Server or for the web login or for Hub Business. Mm. So it's interesting. And we are very serious because it's not expensive for us have you on hub personal why i'm mentioning that because if it's expensive eventually i might cut that but that's not the case so it's not more expensive than devotion online drive for us so it's interesting it's, it's, it's our next step because you have a real interesting interface user interface absolutely um now i know we're, as we're talking about the projects we're doing right now is there anything in the present things that what we're working on and uh, anything, any projects that right now is like the, what the focus of RDM as we go now? Because I know there's some, maybe some features you wanted to showcase, um, well, but, but it, we're soon in the future. It's a thin line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, cause I know we'll be talking about people always want to know the roadmap. So we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit, but um, any of that, what, what's our main focus right now? Like as the builds come out in 2021. Okay. What for the present, our, our, Idea is to make sure to eliminate the friction. Be make make remote desktop faster, less memory leak. A few weeks ago, I was fixing memory leak. It's not easy. You have to deep dive in remote desktop manager because it's not obvious. Like ah, oh, there's memory leak. It's not always obvious. So we 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 had some uh, freeze. Uh, we did a lot of uh, debugging with the core dump, with the memory dump, and we get better at that. We we had the lunch and learn about how to 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 debug remote desktop manager with with a memory dump, and it's interesting. Uh, we fixed a lot of uh, of a uh, lock a freeze in remote desktop manager. So so we try to improve that. We we know, but it's it's always a balance between feature set performance and and some people are asking, okay, could it be lighter? Yes, we try, but if the one missing that you want, if the one feature is missing, you will be happy that we had it. So, so it's a challenge for us. Do we want to do something like RDC man, stripped down version only RDP? Yes, but I want to do SSH. Okay, yeah, about so it's a big, big, big challenge. But we we are aware of that and we try. You know, we we used to call Vault repository. We we came from a, a software development site, so a repository, GitHub. Uh, it's very interesting. So we changed that for Vault. So it was more because I, I was listening to, to uh, friends doing some, some demo, and she was always saying, OK, you have a repository. OK, it's kind of Vault. <laughs> OK, could we rename it for Vault? We, we had the private Vault. We changed it for the user Vault. Why? Because it was confusing with Hub Personal. No, now it's easier for us to explain you that you have your share vault when you put everything related to the company. You have your user vault. You put everything related to the company for you. So if you leave the company, if uh, you could access it, but if you have your Facebook email uh, account password, you put that in Hub Personal. So we try to separate the different silo. So we get better, and with the PAM, Maurice did a lot of work with. Gartner to have the right naming of the stuff. 
Yeah. Because we, we come from another side. So that's something that we try to do. Get better, but we know that we're not perfect. And sure, we don't sure. pretend to. And the uh, user vault, that's uh, one line in your change history, but it's a major How undertaking. Are you mean for the future? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're crossing the tin yeah. line. Or <laughs> we're, we're going in the future. Back well, to the that future. That was a work map, the roadmap. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah but I, 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 I agree, though. I think it's good. It's, we're trying to do naming conventions that you guys recognize, too, that are familiar because it, it, se segregating the different vaults, is, I think it was a big deal, too, especially yeah. with um, things. And it's easier to manage, too, from an administrative perspective, too. That's what we do ourselves. Yeah. We're, Dave has always done dog fooding. Yeah, but now it's it's everywhere, and we're uh, we're using internal builds as, uh, for our own uh, Pam, mm -hmm. uh, so we suffer through our mistakes mm -hmm. before you. So it's it's better, uh, but yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, one of our users, Giacomo, said, "Would would be there be the great? Okay, would be great the possibility to create a vault template with the possibility to set permissions and other settings. So every time you need to add a vault." You don't have to create from yeah. scratch. Yeah, I like that. That yeah. was interesting. And that's it, simple. Yeah, yeah, that would be kind of cool. And he's we not, have it for some of other stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny because I have an idea for a future version. It's a kind of we have the um, maybe eventually uh, Mark could uh, show us. It's the uh, group template, but honestly, it's it's not well done uh, because you could create you select you select multiple uh, entries and you you save as a group template group. template group. Oh, yeah. But you can't edit that. That is, could be so powerful because when you get a new employee, it could create a kind of template group where you, you answer question. Okay, fill, fill out the, the new oh, alarm code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is your office default password and tac, tac, tac. Like a little so, wizard kind of thing. Like a little wizard for the Ooh. password. That, that's the thing I have in mind yeah. for, for the, the, the user role. And, and you know, the other stuff that I have in mind, it's Give the power to the people. It's, it's a little... <laughs> no, but the idea is instead of asking, okay, I'm a developer. I have access to the vault. No, I'm, I'm a little bit in the future, future. Okay, it's not coming soon. But that's something that I have in mind just to show you that we are thinking ahead and you could comment on that. So if I'm a, a developer, I'm a new at Devotion, and I ask Maurice, okay, uh, I need that. And Maurice said, okay, you could go to the dev uh, vault and I go in. Where is the dev vault? Okay. Marissa, could you give me access instead? I could just request access to a vault and Maurice get the the, uh, the, the, notification. the notification, approve, and I get access. Mm. So this could be interesting mm. to give the power to the people to create their home vault as well, like you can do in Teams and Slack, you can create your channel. So that's the mindset that I want to do. Maybe in 2022, it's, it's be able to populate the, the vault or the vault list with the needs of the user. So I like the uh, the idea of user vault template. He he also added this. Um, he said also would be great even if there are some features like special actions or batch edit mm -hmm. to export data from a vault in some formats and then after modifications the possibility to re-import them all. Yeah. As a batch? batch, a batch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have something for that. We have the uh, PowerShell batch action that could be oh. very interesting. Yeah. Because it's, it's uh, if you go in batch action, you have PowerShell, you can write a small script to access, I think it's a uh, dollar sign RDM dot connection. Can you show that? Can Mark, can you at least uh, pull maybe, it up? I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but on the spot. I, I'm, just saying, the spot. Yeah, I'm saying, because he's mentioning something that I, I'm not familiar with. So you can, okay. you can just use the, the text that, it, as it, that is in the uh, example. example before. No so, stress. So, so you you could you are able, and this will be executed for every entry, uh, that every entry that you have in your selection. So, for example, if you want to uh, to add uh, maybe uh, change the the, the uh, DNS, the custom DNS, that's something you want to do. Have you seen? Are you able to find it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah he's go. <laughs> we're we're all here. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna we'll, we'll look that up because I that's a very interesting yeah. uh, thing. No, that's a powerful feature. It's well, only on Windows for now. Yeah, but uh, because we are unable to execute the, the PowerShell, but that's something that we want to eventually do. Talking about PowerShell as well, though, I know that somebody said documentation is always a thing. 
are is there plans to possibly have PowerShell script access to generate documentation pages? Yes, it's on our to-do list. Uh, okay. I, could, I will ask uh, Olivier about that, but I know that's on our to-do list. Okay, very good. So that's Michael uh, Sachs yeah. asked that question. It's, that's a good question. So, um, um, so we're, we're we're looking at the batch edit right now. He's going to take a look at that. Yep. And uh, would there be a Sam asked? Would there be a subscription aimed at the sole RDM user? Something more affordable than enterprise that would allow them to use a data source. It doesn't have all the team sharing features, but still allows enterprise features such as offline docs, PowerShell, and hosts. Um, uh, I think that we have something with the Devotion Server. It's the uh, client access license. Oh, okay. Uh, it's web based. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, maybe you could take a look and see if uh, something is missing. We also support the launcher. You know, we used to have the launcher on all the different platforms. Oh, it's Evolution's launcher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now it's only on Windows. Uh, it was not, uh, we see where your URL, your elbow. Oh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's live TV. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, so, uh, so it was, uh, it was, uh, really not easy for us to support the launcher on all the different platforms. So we decided to just keep the windows version of the launcher and we are improving. Um, okay. So it's it's only to open connection. You don't get the list. It has to be connected to a hub business or a, uh, our password server. So it's really what you see in um, in uh, Tychotic or uh, CyberArk. It's only the the, the session launcher. Okay, uh, but it's interesting because uh, we uh, we know that some people really like it because it's simple. Mm. It's simple. That's true. All right, Mo. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to your screen here. So there you go. Yes, so uh, the, the trick is to multi-select your stuff first. You need multiple selections. My favorite is to really to use the advanced search okay. and uh, Ooh. specify the type. And this will display only what is used. But And then you search, and then you select, and then you select a navigation pane. So I did that with a customer yesterday. It, it was uh, that cyber customer that had 20,000 sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that's that's the pre prerequisite. And then you go into edit, exit special actions, custom PowerShell command. And in this, what is outside of your script window is loading all of your sessions that are currently focused into a collection and it will process but for each loop on all of your your connections, so the obviously the the sample is here. Uh, I don't see the cursor. Okay, and uh, uh, there I can I change the name? And it succeeded in modifying two sessions. You see the names have changed. Oh. So it's but that script can be anything. Uh, can imagine. You see, it's it's made to process these records, but you could add them to a collection and and export CSV later on. And for the import, it would be better to use the uh, the full fledged uh, commandlet. Yeah, but we have, uh, if I remember correctly, we have a, a partial uh, synchronizer. Mm. Yeah. So, um, and this is our favorite walk around when we uh, when we have a set when. We get a request from a user to change a setting for a batch of, uh, of MPs. yes, and when it's not in the user interface because it might be because it's a new feature and it hasn't been updated yet. So it's interesting because it, it's it's kind of a legal backdoor to script and update. And sometimes if if you don't know how to change a value, small email, post on the forum, and we will we will give you the information. Because our structure is hierarchical and it's quite deep, yeah. uh, but uh, we'll find out. Uh, it's pre pretty easy for us to just show you how to see you change it first, and you will see where it changes. It's just it's nearly impossible to document everything. It's, oh. it's, it's too, we have too many entries, too, too entry types. It's it's uh, it's the power of remote desktop manager, but uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Is that's that would be a good question they could always ask on the forum too though right yeah for specific requests I mean yeah. especially what PowerShell field? scriptings and 
things like that. That's what our team does. Uh, the, 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 um, the forum is, uh, is my favorite channel because uh, you, you get the direct access to. And to it's multiple team. eyes looking at yeah. it. If you come in through a ticket, the ticket is handled by the uh, coordinator and is assigned to someone. So it's uh, one set of eyes will answer on the forums. It's the team leaders of each product are monitoring their own products forums. Uh, a lot of us are monitoring all of them. So it's just uh, fun stuff on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, great. So uh, here, here's one of the things, and, and you, you can speak to this because I know this can whether we do a QA and a or not, because right now we're doing all the questions anyway. But um, they say they love RDM and uh, love all the features. The only real big complaint is application performance. Um, and they say it's a little bit sluggish. It's gotten better in the past 12 months, so good. But it still feels, they say, slow compared to other remote desktop solutions that they've used. Is there any performance improvements plan in the roadmap? Or how, how are we handling it? Like, no, no, we're, no, we're aware. Okay. We're aware of it. You know? But, but uh, you have to be fair. Because if you put 5,000 uh, sessions in RDC, man, not sure that we're working. Sure, sure. So the problem is that uh, at, at some point, people are, are not... Uh, we, we have Vault. So if you split your data in Vault, and uh, I know that uh, we get a lot of requests to support multiple data sources at the same time. But we will just... Uh, not enhance, but we will... Uh, Move, move push further the problem with more stuff in memory so that's the problem so for example if you open uh if you open 20 session uh never open 20 word document I'm not sure it will be uh passed with word that's true and it's so so you have to be fair we try to improve that but at the same time it's not easy and i know that uh, we are profiling the application often and I know that 2021 version, as our Stefan, our CTO, he did a rework of the uh, connection engine to be uh, able to support new features, and it has improved uh, the performance. Uh, we added uh, the time-based uh, access validation, and we found out that uh, it, it was possible to get uh, uh, a problem if you were working from a satellite. Uh, because we were asking for the server time. So uh, as we find out solution, but, but to be honest, it's not, it's not easy. Mm. And um, we, we try to improve. We try to improve for sure. Absolutely. It's a challenge. Good. Um, now, I think, okay, this might be a great segue because it's already 1130. And, uh, and I do want to talk about the roadmap a little bit because you're gonna, just some things that you're going to be it's not a roadmap. Okay, but not it's roadmap, what, but it's what's what's coming soon because okay. uh, yesterday uh, we released uh, RDM twenty twenty one dot one three on okay. the forum. Oh, good. Uh, it's not on the download page. Later this week, I might uh, enable the 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 link on the download page. It's because why not the enterprise edition? It's unfortunately it's breaking change. We are moving uh, with uh, uh, an uncompatible uh, database because of a really really great feature, and we could talk about that if you want. If you want, it's the uh, it's the user vault, which <laughs> sometimes I I French. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. I heard Maurice French as well, and you know if my French accent. It's up in. It's not me. Ah. It's the platform. It's, it's, it's altered, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but. <laughs> But uh, the enterprise edition is a little tricky to do a better, and and we want to make sure that we 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 have the free edition which test because we don't have this problem. It's a huge change, but it's really really interesting. The user vault is now a real vault. What does it mean? It means that you can now have attachment. Okay, attachment. I don't I don't want to put my invoice. Okay, but attachment could be the SSH key. Uh, it could be certificate. Uh, so it's really interesting. Now you have the one of the most annoying thing that we had, the deleted view. So if you delete something now in your user vault, uh, you you can recover it. It's 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 a major pain. Uh, it used to be a major pain because you had to restore a backup. And uh, we also have the entry history. We have uh, 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 a real encryption. Uh, in, the, the, uh, in the devotion server, it's the same encryption as a vault, so the same security level would be applied. But 
we have to migrate from a kind of blob base uh, user vault to a real database table store um, user vault. Mm. So for that, it means that you need to have a devotion server 2021 beta. And for the if you're using SQL Server, you need to move forward. So if you are interested, uh, we could we will put soon a link. Just make sure to back up. We, we are using it for a long time. We're yeah. testing it for a long time, but it's just because you have to be careful with that. And when you will install the 2021, you will need to ask your users to to move forward at the same time. So it's it's really interesting because it's it's a huge breaking change. We also have another breaking change, which is uh, we encrypt now the serial uh, by default. During the beta, we will keep uh, a backward compatibility. Make sure that, if, for example, if you move uh, forward backwards with, with your config, not the database, but the configuration. But eventually, we will uh, with the final version, the the, the previous uh, data will just be uh, removed. And you will have uh, your license in place, which means that some people were afraid to install it on their customer site. And uh, when you are MSP, you don't want to give your license to your, uh, your customers, so it will be encrypted, which means that they won't be able to to copy that data. Very interesting. It's not only that feature, but it's it's yeah 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 one breaking change. No, absolutely. Okay, um, we. Uh, one thing I was going to do, I was going to take a break, but I don't think we need one because we only have 25 minutes left anyway. But I do want to remind you, okay, because um, if you have a second, one thing, first of all, if your refresh is, uh, if it's getting a little bit delayed again, just go ahead and refresh your browser. But what I did want to do is we're going to, we're going to talk about some more features, but if you want to take a minute and go into the booth, um, the expo section, we have a prize we wanted to give away. This is a, a first copy, a first edition. It's actually just papers right now. But what we're doing is um, we want to give away this, okay? It's a sysadminator comic book. So a lot of you guys love, we have a fantastic comic artist and he's like an artist in residence. Like he works for us specifically. His name is Patrick. He never likes to be on camera. He never yeah. likes his picture, but uh, the guy is absolutely phenomenal, okay? He always comes up with great, Things that that detail the life of an IT admin, IT people, and I laugh every time. I've, I mean, I've been brought into tears sometimes because it's so funny. But they he collected the best of the best and put them all into this comic book format for you. And we want to give away five copies of this uh, System Minotaur um, comic strip book. Okay, so but what we need you to do right now, instead of taking a break, I you could just head over to. Um, the, um, the 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 expo tab on the left hand side and there's a booth Jenny created a booth there specifically that all you got to do is go in the booth and then um, once you click in the booth there's a little I think a register button on the right hand side and when you do that it'll register your email I got the emails popping up on my screen here uh, and at the very end of this right before we say farewell uh, at noon we're gonna go ahead and draw five names and then we'll send you uh, a copy of this amazing book okay so it'll be a lot of fun you can also if you want to actually see them uh max is going to put a link uh in the um in the uh backstage uh in the chat right now to view all of the uh he has all these comic strips available online on on the website so uh anyway but it'll be i think it'll be really nice i can't wait to get my copy uh but it'll be a lot of fun the evolution of, of the design the oh first yeah one was where the original i asked uh, patrick for a um, uh, remastered edition events really oh <laughs> uh, yeah uh, for, for because uh, you see the evolution of, of the details and, uh, it's amazing and in fact if you go on our youtube channel too he made one called the vault and a uh, video but man that Sometimes you think, oh, you know, oh, that's easy. He's a comic artist. Just make a movie. Oh, my no, goodness. No, no, no. It took a long time. Like, I do videos and, oh, animation's not my thing and takes forever. So, anyway. Oh, you uh, have to hire people for the voice. Yeah, you have to do that. You have yeah. to do the uh, Everything. The song. And just, yeah, he, he illustrates, but he had to illustrate, like, uh, a la Disney back in the day. Where every yeah. single yeah. screen and, oh, it was really good. But, anyway, and it took, for one minute and 30 second video, it took uh, a year. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> At full time. <laughs> yeah, but but that that's that's what ha what happens. But anyway, um, 
So uh, you can always do that. Uh, and also check out our YouTube channel. I know you see my face a lot of times or my voice, you know, uh, welcome to Remote Desktop Manager. Uh, but we, we try to post as many videos that help. I know a lot of people said, oh, they love the videos on the how-tos. The problem is at one point, my goodness, making how-to videos on every topic is a challenge. And we even, we even tried doing a lot of them. And uh, yeah. because of evolution of things changing, we try to focus on certain things. So you'll kind of see a little mishmash of everything on there. We've got podcasts. We've got uh, Devolutions HQ. Jenny and I do those once in a while um, and other things. But uh, check out our, our YouTube. If you subscribe there and hit the like button you know, and comment, we will, uh, we'll do our best to keep content that's relevant to help you. Because I know a lot of people are vis visual like this right now. We could have just sent a, a newsletter or a blog. You know, really, yeah. but um, or wrote a book and send it. But you guys, the, the interaction, I think, really is helpful for this. Um, so anyway, just want to let you know. So if you need to hop out and go do that really quick, you can hop out and hop back in. Get it? <laughs> but uh, um, you can uh, register for that because we want to make sure you have a chance to do that. So we have about um, 20 minutes left. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some uh, specific, well, not features, but anything that you want to show off. Uh, that's, that's really cool. I know Mark can get ready for that. Yep. And, um, talk a little bit about the future or some plans and yep. things that are important it's, to you. It's near future that we're going to talk about. Okay. Very good. Because, uh, I have a small list that would be what will be released in, uh, RDM 2021. Yeah. Okay. On our blog, you have the roadmap. If you want to see the future, future. Yeah. Let, now it's, it's the near future. So uh, I'll go through my list, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. And Mark, you could, uh, I will keep the one that Mark could uh, show us. So uh, I talked a little bit about that. We will have the Wake Bastion data source in the Remote Desktop Manager Enterprise. So you will be able to have everything centralized, get, the, um, get uh, your session in the tree and uh, the list if you had, if you create a new, new uh, entry and your Bastion, you will see it. We will have it. This one uh, was a really a request feature. It was the multiple SSH gateway in the SSH, SSH shell entry. Uh, this was added to do a jump and jump. Okay. Uh, so it's an interesting one. Uh, thank you to Denis uh, who uh, did the implementation and Uber who did the integration. Uh, so so people may might not be aware, but we have to to implement most of our uh, protocols. So we're not using. For some, we're using third party, but sometimes for the SSH, the FTP, uh, we have to do our own stack, and it's it's powerful. At the beginning, we were using Putty, but now we are far ahead of Putty. But it's always a good uh, good uh, challenge for us if something is missing, and something that you had in Putty, we know that we can do it in our our stuff. In terms of performance, I know that a lot of work has been done during the last few months uh, when you have a huge in Terminal, a huge, uh, uh, huge data pack of uh, stuff. It's 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 getting better, and it's cross-platform, which in our case compl complexify everything because we have to do it on mobile, on Linux, and on <clears throat> Mac. And on Mac, yeah, yeah, exactly. which is not the case, for example, with Putty. It's only it's only Windows. Yeah, uh, we have the. This is very interesting. It's done for hub business, but it's coming for hub personal. It's the offline mode in read only. Uh, this this is really important because uh, eventually I'm announcing it. We will we will uh, sunset devolution online database. Uh, at the moment, that hub business will be uh, better than what we have online on online database. And the missing piece is the uh, the offline mode. So maybe in one year or two years, if you are on devolution online database. Don't panic. It's not now, and we will move everybody uh, when they were. They will be ready. It's just because we get so um, so much better security set with the SOC two uh, for a business. You will see that it will be uh, a, an interesting move, and it will worth it. So this one is interesting. We also have uh, improved the keeper integration. We will support the uh, the uh, two FA and the uh, keeper integration. Uh, they gave us a new SDK and uh, they, they 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 added uh, a better security and they will deprecate. When I, I was talking about moving forward, they will deprecate their whole API, which means that the whole RDM will no longer work with keeper. That's the challenge that we uh, that we have to live with. It's moving forward with the third party, which is okay because we do the same. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's okay for we we 
they improve their security, so they have to, to, uh, to close the hole sometime. Uh, I mentioned Devolution account will be, uh, login will be uh, external, so you will be able to use Chrome, uh, Safari, or uh, any, uh, any uh, of your favorite browser. We also have, um, and I'm going too fast. It's okay. No, yeah, okay. it's it's perfect. Okay. Yeah, let, just let me know if you if you need yeah, him to queue up anything. Yeah, because I'm keeping the last for for the, the two for last for uh, for Mark. <laughs> Mark is ready, so he will only get paid if he can do his demo. So <laughs> perfect. That's you it. have yeah. to do it, Mark. <laughs> no pressure, Mark. We have a small change which is really interesting. It's key pass direct integration. What does it mean? Hmm. It means that instead of installing the plugin in key pass. We, we rewrite the, the integration to be able to read and apply the same security level to a key, I think it's key BX file. So we are able to read the key, the key pass file directly. So you will no longer need to install if you don't want to, to install the RDM plugin. But that's not the most important part of that. The most interesting part is that it will be cross-platform because it was not possible to install the plugin if you wanted to use it on your mobile phone or on uh, on macOS. So now with the next version, you will be able um, to to leverage the the file. So if you synchronize the file on different devices, you will be able to get access from uh, Linux from any platform that we will implement the, the Keeper integration which is really interesting. This also was a, a highly requested uh, credential entry. We will have a high T glue integrated as a credential entry for the next version. A lot of MSP are using IT glue. We already had the pass portal and I think they are both competitors. So we did the integration of the IT glue. We also added smart card support for SSH. Uh, which will be interesting. Uh, Denny, again, did a, a great work for that. And here's come my two last interesting features. The first one is Edge Chromium <laughs> Embedded. Mark, right. the floor is yours. All right, so I'm going to unmute you, Mark, here, and I'm going to share your screen, my friend. Hi, everyone. This is Mark, so I'm the person you're not seeing on the feed today. <laughs> but it's my pleasure to present to you, as David said, Embedded uh, Edge Chromium. This is something that uh, many of you uh, perhaps have been using for a very long time. For those that are longtime users of Remote Desktop Manager, Embedded Browsing has been something that has been frequently asked, even myself during demos, uh, how well it works and how well it goes uh, so for since the very beginning, we've used uh, different technologies, and for Chrome, it's it's a third-party library. You know, it works well, but it's certainly not the 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 epitome of perfection. So I think that uh, with reservations here, I think that we've just hit the jackpot. Just to show you, in fact, how quick it is uh, with Embedded Edge uh, today. So if I open for example, a web page here for Google, it's instant. Uh, so you navigate on uh, our website. For example, you go on Devolutions. It's just it's just snappy as the browser itself. In fact, I even say that it's faster than the browser itself. So it works well, uh, and you just navigate as seamlessly as you would on any other uh, technology out there uh, in, in terms of, of external web browsing. So, for example, there are some web pages like our store that needs an embedded window uh, out uh, here. So it opens that window that, as you can see here, so it, it just really is so much better than uh, embedded technologies like, again, Chrome or Firefox. It opens seamlessly. And the most important of that is that it's fast. Maybe another thing that I can quickly demonstrate here for vSphere users, for example, that's something that has been requested also using vSphere web page embedded. So I can just launch that. And again, as you can see, it's it's instant. It works well. And uh, I think really is, this is the best, uh, the best feature, I think, one of the best features we're going to offer you in the upcoming release of 2021.1. So this is one of the things that I wanted to showcase and David, uh, his last point is a, a, a new technology here. Uh, a new feature in, in RDP is zooming. Uh, this is something also 
that I've seen some requests in the chat today. So being able to zoom in on RDP sessions. So opening here, one of our hosts, uh, we have in the uh, uh, context menu within the tab, if I right click here, we have the zoom option. So it's easy to zoom out and to just uh, zoom back in. So let's say 175. So as you can see, we really zoom in into the uh, session. One other thing also that can be presented here is when you click on, on duck, we have the same option here in the context of the uh, uh, window here, zoom, and then I can do exactly the same thing, uh, same thing as I did uh, in embedded mode. So again, very, very uh, powerful feature that was added here. Um, another thing also that was requested is uh, webcam support. Uh, this is something that we will have also in the next release. And maybe just to quickly come back to uh, two features that David mentioned for SSH that I can already show available here um, in Remote Desktop Manager. For one of my SSH sessions here into properties, a smart card support. So it's easy to enable it directly uh, from the session here in the drop down certificate method, a uh, CAPI, PKCS, or even try all modes. So that's something that was added here uh, in Remote Desktop Manager uh, and also SSH Gateway uh, Jump Hosts. Uh, again, just to show you that this will be available in the next release. Back to you, Yen. Wow. I just, I don't know you, but I, I love hearing Mark talk. Okay. So I'm just saying, cause I, I understand like I use remote desktop manager, but I'm the marketing dude. Okay. So uh, I have a technical background, but whenever I hear Mark, I'm like, I could hear that voice and just learn everything about remote desktop manager. So anyway, thanks a lot, Mark. Really appreciate it. Uh, and your mom would be proud. So, but anyway, I, we, okay. We have a few minutes left and uh, I wanted to just go over some of the, the last Q and a. Now, one thing that, is interesting though is we do have uh, um, all of these questions here in the in the event and this backstage we get a log of that so well I'm actually gonna save it and then yeah. we'll take a look because I'm gonna miss things right now I know Jenny and Mark and James and Jean Francois are right now answering questions back and forth but I'm sure that I'm gonna miss something uh, maybe that was you know you, you didn't answer my question but uh, the uh, we're doing our best right now but it, you guys are really, really doing a, a good job. So thank you so much. But um, one of the last uh, couple things I wanted to see was uh, uh, just some ideas here or comments. I saw somebody said, John Carling mentioned, he says, you mentioned Keeper or KeePass. You mentioned both of them. So what, what was the different okay. one? It was Keeper Security. And I know we have an integration with them, but KeePass, what's the? KeePass is the open source one. And Keeper is from Keeper, uh, Keeper, uh, the company Keeper. Uh, com uh, it's a password manager. Yep. It's direct competitors to uh, LastPass, uh, One Password, Dashlane. And you know, KeePass is the open source that you, you can download, which is on Windows. But I think that their KeePass, uh, uh, KeePass FC or something like that. Uh, uh, CP or cross platform or something mm. like that. It's it's uh, since it's an open source, somebody has port the key pass uh, to another platform. It's it's a good product. It's open source if you if you really like uh, open source. The idea again is to make sure that uh, you you choose a technology that you are comfort comfortable with and you mix it with remote desktop manager. We want to give value to your existing existing platform, and if it doesn't fit your needs anymore uh, you can take a look at what we are offering and uh, in this case it's it's two different products I, I remember at my last webinar I was always mixed mixing both of keeper key pass so, <laughs> so I, I know it's confusing I was uh, sweating at the same time because oh, it's, I said keeper it's key pass but it's, it's confusing it's two different but we have we have integrations with both, so yeah. very very good. Yeah. Okay, and we have password safe, which is also an open source and a commercial product. Oh sure, different, yeah, but different, the so one that you mentioned easy. earlier, the um, the direct integration that was KeePass. Yes, it's KeePass okay. because KeePass is not Keeper is a website with API. Yeah, KeePass is file based, so you can use if some people know Pleasant Server. Pleasant Server is built uh, as a server, and the 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 they, they created a client based on key 
pass to access the server. So it could be confusing, but they are leveraging the, the open source program for the security, like the secure desktop. That's something that I didn't mention. We have a secure de desktop plugin. You know, it's 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 a kind of like the UAC. When you open, you, you can't have a, a, a key logger. So we, we support in RDM the secure desktop to enter your, your unlock code. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of stuff that was uh, in key pass first, and we, we did the implementation. And it's it's funny because the team, the the, the cybersecurity team, they, they 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 push further. They try to to push further the the, the, the protection. And uh, we are better than Keeper, but that that's something that that they could change easily in their open source. So that's, sure. it won't be long that they will fix what we are wrong. Oh yeah. So it's not it's it's not a somebody it's not a competition. It just it's yeah, just absolutely. Something. Somebody mentioned what about LastPass from LogMeIn? LastPass. Yeah. Man? Yes, what, what the we have an integration with LastPass. Yeah, absolutely. Enterprise. Somebody yes. mentioned Todd Erickson. I'm not sure if what what he meant. If it's it's direct integration though, right? It's since it's a website. Okay. Yes, we we are leveraging their API. Okay. The problem with LastPass, I will be fully transparent. We don't have their their cooperation, but with Keeper, when if they decide to change their API, they they notify us, which yeah. is the main main advantage. It's to to have a real relationship it's not it's not a business in terms of money we don't we, we don't give them money they don't give us no. money we just share the same users but last pass if they change their api their requirement unfortunately we get the notification when it's uh, it breaks. yeah okay Makes which sense. is the difference um they said any estimate of the release date on the 2021 point on enterprise because you said the free one but the yeah enterprise. uh next few weeks Next few weeks, yeah, so. really, uh, it's feature complete. We just want to make sure that uh, all the, the the features are done on the other platform, because mm -hmm. since it's a breaking change, it, the mobile has to be updated. Oh, for example, uh, it's another security feature, really interesting security feature that I didn't mention. It's the new API for Devotion Web Login integration with Remote Desktop Manager. There's a key exchange, so if, for example, if you open it on a terminal. You will access really on your machine, and you will enter the authorization key. So it will be linked really to the right uh, devotion web logging in Remote Desktop Manager. Mm -hmm. So for that, it's a new encryption, it's a new integration. But the devotions web logging is already uh, on the the Chrome Store or the uh, Firefox Store. So it's already backward compatible with the old and the new version. So so it's a challenge to make sure that everybody is ready at the same time. We we call that the DDD, the Devotions Deployment Day. <laughs> so so it's 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 a challenge. Usually I set a date, but we move the date as we go further, you know, like in the gaming industry. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um somebody said, what about uh they said it would be nice. John Kenny said it would be great to have RDM Windows Hello integration. Is that in the books at all? Yeah. Coming up? We do. Uh, it's funny because we do hackathon, hackathon, hackathon. Yeah, well, yeah, we have What's like yeah. the right accent. I'm not sure. Yeah, hackathon. Yeah, yeah, hackathon. Uh, and this is one of the project because uh, the, the the challenge that we used to have it was only UWP supported. So application has to be on the store to support Windows Hello. And I think that there's now walk around for a WinForm or WPF application. So I think it's kind of possible soon. But you know, Microsoft has a really bad uh, strategy a few years ago. They tried to push another UI framework uh, to compete against um, Apple with their with their used to be a phone, a smartphone. So now they are moving away from that with the project reunion, trying to have whatever API you use, everybody should be compatible with .NET or, you mm. know, so for those who follow that. So it will be easier. Edge is one, uh, Edge Embedded is one of their first product. It's it's early, it's really interesting, like Mark uh, demoed, but uh, Microsoft is evolving this product. So we will maybe get better uh, support for, uh, I think that for now we don't have any way to uh, accept or refuse a certificate. Uh, so they will improve different API and we will uh, improve our integration. Great. Sometimes we are limited by the third party. Sure. Oh yeah, there's always limitations, yeah. Um, 
uh i there's a there's a couple more questions here but we're about out of time here but what i was thinking we could do is definitely um we're going to still be around here but if you want to go into one of our other um sessions we have two other sessions and then uh, we have some folks that are going to be answering questions over there we have james uh, lafleur and uh and uh, Jeff Dajna as well, our service desk supervisor, and Mark is in the chat as well. And there's more. If you want to keep asking questions, we can. I can have Maurice type away as well if we want to chat. But I think is this thing is going to come to an end uh, very quickly. And I promised that we would do the draw for the the names as well. So uh, John Kenny, last question, last question. Okay. <laughs> so will Ardia move to .NET? Already in .NET. Do you mean okay. .NET Core? It's a .NET question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> it's it's .NET, you mean, I think you mean .NET Core 5. We okay. will wait for .NET Core 6, okay. unfortunately. And maybe we will be able to, because perform, that's interesting, because when we will be able to move to .NET Core, we will get also performance gain easily yeah. without doing nothing. But it's not quite ready. It's, it's On paper, it's really nice. Sure. But when you have to implement everything, it's another absolutely so uh, what i might do is i might head over into one of the sessions as well so if there's any specific questions for david uh we can answer them as well but um i i really enjoyed this today uh and what's great is we're going to have more of these uh well next month we're going to be doing one on privilege access server. Management, uh, devolution okay. server yeah devolution server with maurice and uh i'll be here as well i'm assuming right uh, <laughs> and uh and then we also have one on password hub business coming up after that and also wake bastion so and we're gonna have marc andre here who's like the genie behind the that, that thing and it'll be great because we'll have more of these discussions i know the heartbeat is rdm but all of our products are going to do the same same concept behind it so um thank you guys so much uh i know we're proud to sebastian uh Guimé said thanks so proud of being quebecers mm -hmm. and uh and yes we, we would be fun somebody mentioned in the q a at one point could we do one in french and i'm yeah, sure eventually We'll, we'll do one in, 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 in français pour tous ceux qui, qui viennent du Québec ou de la France or Belgique or whatever. So, uh, for, the, for wherever you are and you're speak, speaking in French, uh, because we are a Quebec company and that's at our heart as well. But uh, we wanted to provide something worldwide for all of our users in Europe. Thank you for staying up uh, late and uh, for those around the world. So, if you're not familiar with Devolutions Force, um, I think... Uh, Max put a link in the chat earlier about Devolutions Force, but that's kind of our, our community group where we can interact with uh, you folks and uh, they have challenges and things. And um, it's really a fun part of being uh, part of this. So thank you so much. I really, Dave, I really, from the bottom of my heart, I know everybody's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. But thank you so much. I love doing this and uh, we, we could definitely do more. And if you like this format, please uh, let us know. Please let us know because we could do more of these. Numbers were great. Yeah, really. absolutely. The numbers were great. And, and it's just one of those, um, we normally go to places, but because of everything going on, we said, this is the, we're going to do the best we can with what we have. And this will be, be great. So you can be in your, you can wear your pajama pants at home <laughs> while listening to us as well. And so, I, I, by the way, I'm not wearing any, uh, he's not wearing shoes. any shoes. He's got his socks. So <laughs> it's good. Natural. And Mark's got nice slippers as well. So <laughs> good job. But all right, I'm going to go ahead and fade out our screen. So go ahead and go to one of the sessions. If you have any technical questions or any questions, we will be typing away. We're still open till 1230. So we have another half hour. If not, go to one of our booths and uh, check out things there as well. We have videos on all of our products. But thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And uh, we're just, uh, it's, it was a pleasure for us to do this for you. So thank you so much. And let us know if you need anything.